Manor Lords is a medieval city builder at its heart, but it also brings a handful of new things to the table, like Total War style RTS battles. It also features a very complex economy that can take some getting used to. I've put in a few dozen hours so far and restarted a couple of times after I got myself into trouble. Here are the things I wish I had known going in. There's only one map in the current Early Access version of Manor Lords, and unfortunately, you'll be assigned a random location on it every time you start a new game. You might have a very different experience starting right next to the AI-controlled enemy Baron, as opposed to all the way across the map, so as annoying as it might be, I found it was kind of worth it to restart until I got the location I wanted. This spot in the southwest corner is probably the best for a beginner. On top of that, you'll want to scout out a couple of things within your starting area before you even place a single building. Pressing C to bring up the construction menu will reveal several map overlays that you can select from in the bottom right corner of the screen. The two you're going to want to pay attention to are underground water and emmer fertility. Emmer is just a type of wheat, by the way. You'll need the underground water to place a well, and some large areas of maximum fertility, shown in green, to grow enough crops to feed a larger town. Keep in mind that you don't want to build houses and stuff all over the bright green areas, because you'll need that space for fields. But you want your dwellings to be near them. Villagers have to walk to work every day, so forcing them to live too far from where they work reduces the efficiency of your whole settlement. You'll also want to think about a good central location for your church, your tavern, and your market, which are places every villager will need to visit. More on that later, but for now, just leave some room. Villagers and manor lords live on burgage plots, which can be drawn at any size, but I've found that about two of these little ticks across and four or five deep is the sweet spot. As you can see, this provides room for a residential extension, which will let you fit two families on a single plot. Very efficient. And it leaves room for a backyard extension, which is key to the economy in manor lords. More on that in a sec. If your plots look like this, they're just right. If you get something that looks like this, though, you're actually creating two different plots that can only hold one family each. That's not making as good a use of the available space as you could be. Backyard extensions are where a lot of your economy will happen. This is one of the nice little nods to historical accuracy that sets Manor Lords apart. Instead of having a whole bunch of commercial buildings where people go to make things, a lot of people will simply brew beer, keep chickens, or even forge weapons at their own homes. The size of the extension usually doesn't matter, except in one important case. Vegetable gardens will produce more food if you give them more room, which can be a great way to get a good surplus going early on. Your labor pool at the beginning of a new campaign is going to be very small, so you'll have to think carefully about what each family is doing for work. And there's not much room for error at first. The absolute essentials to keep everyone alive are fuel and food. For fuel, it's simple. Just build a woodcutter's lodge from the gathering tab of your construction menu near any forested area and assign exactly one family to start gathering firewood. While you're at it, place a lumber camp as well. You'll need timber to build everything else, so you don't want to run out before you have a way to get more. Also assign one family family here. You won't have enough labor to start doing agriculture yet, so your options for food early on are going to be a little bit limited. But look around your starting area for wild animals and berries. If you happen to have a rich deposit of either one, marked by this little crown over the icon, you should probably focus on that. Keep in mind that berries will go dormant during the winter, but grow back every spring. Wild animals can be hunted year-round, but if you hunt too many, the population could be depleted. So make sure you set the hunting limit in your hunting camp here. I like to put it at around half of the total animal population in the area. 
Whether you choose berries or hunting, assign one family to food for now. Don't try to do both just yet. That should leave two families free, and I recommend you keep it that way for the moment. Unassigned families will automatically work on logistics, moving things around your settlement and helping out with construction. You should set up a small granary and a small storehouse next, which can both be found on the logistics tab. Otherwise, your food and supplies will be exposed to the elements and can be lost. So to recap, that's one family on fuel, one on timber, one on food, and two unassigned. Any deviation from this could mess you up pretty badly before your first winter, so try to keep that ratio until you get more people moving in. The other option you have to supplement your food production that won't take up an entire family assignment is to upgrade burgage plots with chicken coops and vegetable gardens. Try to get at least two of each as quickly as possible and build the residential extensions, so you'll have a modest industry of eggs and veggies as well as room for eight total families. Keep in mind that goats don't provide food, so you should hold off on them just for now. These are the makings of a successful early settlement. Now that you have a good base to build off of, your focus should be on attracting new people and upgrading your burgage plots to even higher levels, which will unlock new industries and start generating passive wealth income for the whole region. Remember that it doesn't matter how high your approval is if you don't have anywhere for people to move into, so you should continue to build new burgage plots every time you fill up your existing ones. But don't go too crazy, because more people means you'll need more food Food, and relying on hunting, foraging, chickens, and vegetable gardens can eventually lead you to having more people than you can feed. The quickest way to make everyone happier is to build a wooden church, which is also a requirement to upgrade plots to the second level. The other requirement is a marketplace with at least two types of food and one type of clothing available. All you have to do is define an area for the market and your villagers will start setting up stalls automatically. Now is a good time to assign some newcomers to either berries or hunting, whichever one you didn't start out with. Now is also a good time to build a couple backyard extensions with goat pens. This, combined with hunting, produces hides, and building a tannery under the industry tab will turn those hides into leather, which can satisfy your basic clothing needs. Hold down tab to see which plots are missing things required to level up, and try to provide those. If you see this green icon, it means you can click this button to upgrade them to the next level. Hovering over your settlement name will tell you the requirements to reach the next settlement level, and every settlement level you get a development point. But at least in early access, you won't be able to unlock the whole tree. You'll get a total of six points to spend per settlement, so it's good to think about which ones you want to take ahead of time. If you want to focus more on producing the best possible military equipment, or having the most productive farms. Keep in mind that you can still buy things like honey and plate armor through a trading post, even if you don't unlock them from the development tree. It can just get a little pricey. Also, every settlement you found in a new region will be able to level up and assign development points separately, so you can eventually have all of the perks available across multiple settlements and trade things between them as needed. You'll be notified about bandit camps as soon as they appear, and they'll become more dangerous the longer you leave them alone. Raise a militia from the army tab and take the fight to them before they get a chance to bring it to you. If it's your first game, don't be afraid to use the setup options to give yourself five years of peace. That should be enough time to get an iron mine, a bloomery, a blacksmith, a saw pit, and a joiner's workshop. That will let you build enough spears and shields to equip a full militia unit, which should be enough to deal with those hooligans. There's a lot more to learn in Manor Lords, but that should cover the basics and get you off to a running start. Make sure to check out our ever-growing guide on IGN.com, and while you're here, have a look at our video on trading. And for everything else in gaming, keep it right here on IGN.